Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Let's talk about unification. I don't know when this started, but taking a broad look of RPGs over the decades creates a kind of divide between two schools of thought. The first is games that are a series of subsystems regarding their resolution mechanics, and the second is a unified mechanic that acts as the focal point for every part of the game, much like how all roads lead to Rome. While this could appear to be a case of old games versus new games, exceptions are on both sides, as Sturgeon's Revelations would state. Today, we'll be looking at a game that veers away from the unification school of thought in Strike. A first for the series, as Strike could easily be considered a universal-style game. Described as Burning Wheel kit-bashed with D&D 4th Edition, does this approach result in something unique, or is it less than the sum of its parts? Let's find out. At 207 pages, Strike is a fairly easy read. Taking D&D 4th Edition as a bit of its inspiration, the game carries that magazine-like style. I do think some parts of the text suffer from compression, but I never had a problem reading the book. The problem comes from the game's self-awareness. I freely admit this is a subjective issue, but the combination of rounded fonts, its choice of art, and the self-aware nature of the writing gives off the impression of a game meant for a younger audience. Problem is, the mechanics aren't really built for that kind of audience. In addition, I feel like a bit of separation in several parts are called for. It's like the game wants to be fantasy, but at the same time it wants to do fantasy, SF, and other genres all at once. You can't have it both ways. It's not a bad presentation, it's just not one that's playing to its strengths. Character creation is split into a narrativist portion and a tactical one which we'll be exploring with our look at a divine assassin named Akiro. The first step is background, which determines what the character does. Attached to this is a starting pool of skills, wealth rating, and a special trick. In our case, we'll be going with, well, assassin. This grants him the following skills. Poisons, sharpshooting, social engineering, stealth, and underworld contacts. It also starts him with a wealth rating of 1 and the getaway trick. Step 2 is Origin, which can be considered the closest to race and ethnicity, depending on the campaign type. The Origin grants two skills and one complication from their respective lists. We'll be going with Divine Spark in this case, granting us the Divine Connections and Blessing skills, and we'll pick up the Marked complication. Step 3 is Personalization, as we may add one additional skill, complication, and trick. In our case we'll go with the Skirmishes skill, Divine Enemy complication, and case a joint trick. Step four concerns gear, which unfortunately is implied to be an improvised affair. In our case, we'll go with bracers, prayer beads, a poison kit, a lock picking kit, and a bodysuit. Lastly, on this half of it, kit, which is a package of advantages that one can pick from. We'll go with the brute in our case and take the brush it off advance. This brings us to the second half of the equation, the combat section of the sheet. It should be noted that unless abilities modify it, a starting character has 10 HP and 6 speed. The first step in this is class. The handful of classes displayed are meant to be easily reskinned, and of the various classes we'll go with Martial Artist. This grants us the focused attack and counter power, and three stance powers to choose from. We'll go with Weeping Willow, Flickering Flame, and Mandala. Secondly, Roll. This completes their pool of combat abilities and determines their style of usage. Of the five rolls, we'll go with Striker. This grants us the Quick Shift, Strike Back, and Damage Boost maneuvers. Lastly, we may start with one feat. Feats are semi-organized and have a more immediate effect than in its contemporaries, and in our case we'll go with Savage Striker. In a way, character creation feels like that of Fireborn, in that you're making two characters at once. But in this case, the lack of synergy between the two bugs me. The fact that your choices in one don't play as much of a factor in the other and all the more so when there isn't a detailed skill list for how individual skills are used. It's just a series of tags. Furthermore, while there's a degree of flexibility within the class and role system, it's not as flexible to justify the reskinning argument it tries to make. Many of the classes still have a fantasy inclination, and aren't designed to be the level of multi-purpose it wants to be. This is demonstrated by the fact that several classes are clearly designed with certain roles 
more valued than others. The lack of ability scores doesn't help matters in terms of build variety either. I'm not saying character creation is bad, just a little undercooked. Strike uses a d6 system. Instead of a pool-based approach, you roll 1d6 that has a set of universal results. In non-combat roles, this determines whether you succeed, fail, or have a twist or bonus to the rule, which I've called the and but. With attack rules, this determines if you gain a strike, deal damage, add an effect, or do double damage. Action points are strike's extra effort mechanic, and are gained by GM award or when a player uses a complication, flaw, or chooses to forgo a roll for a twist. Combat itself can be seen as a heavily simplified version of D&D 4th Edition's Tactical Combat, with the main change being Rally, this game's version of Second Wind, also recovers encounter powers as well as HP. I can see what Strike is trying to do here, trying to have a sandbox where the narrative is more important than the crunch. However, I can't help but feel like it uses narrative too much as a crutch. A lot of the finer points in the mechanics fall into this descriptive net that seems to repeat itself a bit too many times for my liking. Instead of having a list of skills and tricks as finer mechanics, they merely have a description. And as I mentioned before, skills seem to be used as a set of tags. Despite the reskinning issue in its tactical system, that side comes off stronger because it's far less reliant on GM fiat. To put it another way, these rules are a first step, meant to be expanded upon. If I were to describe Strike in one word, it would be kitbash. By trying to have combat and non-combat work on parallel tracks instead of on two parts of the same hole, it creates a game that feels like it's taking its parts and mashing them together with duct tape. Unfortunately, only one of these parts is more defined than the other. I admit to having some issues with Universal games, but I feel that this would be a much stronger entry if it focused on trying to be a wide variety of fantasy subgenres instead of trying to go for any potential genre. In that regard, the mechanics would have a stronger sense of cohesion, but by going universal, it's trying to do too much with too little. And this results in the game being so reliant on the GM pulling things out of his ass for its narrative elements. To put it another way, Strike feels like reading a system reference document rather than an individual game. This is something meant to be tinkered with in order to make the type of game you wish to, rather than having a set of directions to encourage and or discourage. As such, the highest grade I can give this game is, unfortunately, Caution. Strike is not a bad game per se, but much like the heavy hitters in the universal style of play, it's a starting point. The tabletop equivalent to the Unity engine. I can only really recommend it to people who like hacking established games into the style they wish to play in the same way Palladium had to be heavily hacked in order to be playable. In other words, this is a buy based on its potential, not what's in the box. It'd need to pick a lane before becoming more than that. Stay frosty.